the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our Brothers and sisters, it's good to see you all this morning. So a couple of weeks ago, in my homily, I talked about how Jesus used situations to test the, the faith of his disciples. And at that time, it was uh, regarding the feeding of the 5,000 uh, people where Jesus tells his disciples, you know, you give them something to eat. You only have five loaves and two fish, but you want, I want you to feed all these people. And the disciples, you know, uh, were obedient. And of course, they then were, took part uh, in, this, in this great miracle. But just a chapter later, we read that they were faced with another situation where they had to feed 4,000 more people, and the disciples come running to Jesus and they were saying, where are we going to get enough food? <laughs> so apparently they didn't quite learn that lesson uh, well enough, but, you know, the disciples, like all of us, were faithful at times, and at other times, they were weak. That's just all a part of the spiritual growth, right? Well, today's gospel uh, lesson, we have another incident where the disciples' uh, faith is tested, and this... Uh, Poor demon, uh, the boy who was being, uh, you know, uh, tortured by these demons, and they were helpless at being able to deal with it, to cast out these demons. And, you know, just like a little while before that, they had been bragging about how, well, even the demons are subject to us, you know. And in this case, yet, yet they were helpless, and they come to Jesus and say, well, why? You know, we, we cast out demons before. Why could we not do it again? And Jesus said, uh, your faith is because of your lack of faith. Um, you know, faith is not something that's static. It really is it's dynamic. It has to be renewed every day. Just because we're faithful today doesn't guarantee that we're going to be faithful tomorrow. We all know this, right? And so it's something that we need to continually renew our faith in Christ every day. The disciples in this case had apparently taken for granted the power given to them, or they had come to believe that it was inherent within them. They, they neglected to, to realize that the, the source of their power was, was in Christ. Their lack of faith indicated they had, forget, they had forgotten that their power over the demonic spirits was from Jesus. It kind of reminds me of this other uh, incident we read about in the book of Acts, about these uh, itinerant uh, uh, exorcists, you know, who were so some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> and then the man in whom the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So it didn't go so well for them. Again, because they thought that the power was within themselves, forgetting that it was that any power that we have only comes from, from Jesus. Jesus doesn't, it, this is not magic, okay? We recognize that in, in, in the source of, of any power or strength that we have, that it's not something that comes from ourselves, but it comes from the Lord through faith. And Jesus does give us a couple of ways, a couple of very practical ways that we can strengthen our faith, that we can access His grace in our life. And this is nothing new, brothers and sisters. It's what we hear all the time. It's prayer and fasting. That's what Jesus says to the disciples. These don't come out except by prayer and fasting. Now we can identify with the disciples in the current challenges we face. We may feel helpless in the midst of, of the turmoil in our world, or the problems within, within our own life, troubles that we face. People respond in different ways, anger, fear, denial, hopelessness, rebellion, throwing caution to the wind. Well, what about prayer and fasting, right? Why is this not our response? Don't we believe that Jesus is sovereign over all creation? That whatever turmoil there is in the world, whatever troubles we face in our life, that He is sovereign over that? <coughs> Do we have that kind of faith? Whatever problems we face, God gives us the opportunity to repent, to seek the Lord's help, 
through prayer and fasting. You know, some time ago I was kind of helping a friend or counseling a friend who was in, in a really dark place and he was having some real troubles and was in a, was in a, a, a tough spot. And he was, you know, kind of bemoaning all these things that he was going through. And I, so I said to him, you know, have you prayed about this? And then his response was, wow, has it come to that? <laughs> and I said, brother, it came to that a long time ago. You know, why do we think that prayer is always our last resort when it really should be our first resort? The prophet Micah says that my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. You know, we Christians often complain about, you know, the restrictions on the church and whatever uh, that, that we're facing in our society today. But you know what there are no restrictions on? Prayer and fasting. No restrictions on that. We can pray and we can fast as much as we want. This is how we strengthen and exercise our faith. And one other thing is necessary. We hear in the liturgy just before communion, you know, with faith, uh, with faith and love draw near, right? In the fear of God, with faith and love draw near. And so love also is very important. In fact, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, a chapter I'm sure we're all familiar with, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So faith, prayer, combined with love, that is the strength. That is the best way to, to access God's power. If we, if we uh, pray and treat others with love, um, it, that's how we exercise our faith. Now, do we believe that God answers prayer? I believe that God answers prayer. It may not always be the answer we want, but God does hear our prayers if we're praying in sincerity. Some years ago, I saw, I read this article about this, uh, it was a small town, a very small town, somewhere in the Midwest, I can't remember exactly. But this town had, they had no uh, bars or nightclubs until uh, one time this businessman came and he bought a place right on Main Street in town, and he turned it into a, a bar, you know, tavern, nightclub. And, and the Christians in that town were, were pretty upset by this. And there was one congregation that began a, a prayer crusade <laughs> on this issue. And they got people together and they prayed, you know, that, that, this, uh, that this bar would not, you know, be able to open. Well, the bar did open, but they were praying that somehow God would deal with it, right? In fact, they would have groups of people that would stand outside of the bar and pray that it would close, you know, that somehow God would intervene and it would close. Well, after some time, one night, lightning struck the bar. Now, thankfully, nobody was you know, injured or hurt, but it destroyed them. Basically, the bar burned to the ground. And the, the bar owner sued the congregation, <laughs> took them to court, claiming that their, it was their, because of their prayers that he lost his business. Now, what do you think the, the, the church did? You think they rejoiced and thanked God that their prayers were answered? No. They hired a lawyer to fight the charges. And it's interesting, the judge in his decision said, wherever the guilt may lie, it was obviously the tavern keeper, not the church, who really believed in the power of prayer. <laughs> so do we believe God answers prayer? Well, if we do, when we pray, we, you know, we, we better act on that and, and accept whatever answer that, that God is going to give. The terms prayer and fasting have become kind of a part of the popular uh, the lexicon of our day. You know, we hear a lot about thoughts and prayers in response to some tragedy. And that's fine. That's good. If we are actually praying. But let's not just say, you know, use the word prayer to indicate our concern for something. If we're going to say we're going to pray for something, then we should actually do it. And not just, you know, use the expression thoughts and prayers. 
Prayer is not just a term to show that we're concerned. Neither is prayer a list of our needs and wishes that we are asking God to rubber stamp. St. Paul says that with prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Well, but always with the caveat, Lord, it's your will, not mine. Your will, not mine, be done. So yes, we do pray we, with thanksgiving. We do pray uh, and let our requests be made known. But understanding that our prayer is we're, we're putting ourselves basically uh, you know, in, in God's hands. And just saying it's your will that, that is to be done. And then now with regard to fasting. I've recently read some articles about the, the health benefits of intermittent fasting. Have you heard about this? Intermittent fasting. And it's, you know, the, the way it's described, it's almost like some sort of a health plan or, or a diet plan, right? And uh, while I'm sure that there, it may be true that fasting is good for our physical health, these articles totally ignore the spiritual benefits of fasting. As one writer put it, Jesus did not tell us to fast so that you could fit into your skinny jeans. <laughs> fasting is a spiritual discipline above all. Prayer and fasting are these disciplines that God gives to strengthen our faith and enable us to access His grace in our lives. We're not likely to face the same kind of dramatic, demonic experience that the, that the disciples faced in this account. But whatever Whatever demons that we're battling in our lives, anger, envy, gluttony, greed, lust, pride, sloth, whatever it is, those can only be dealt with through prayer and fasting. We can only have victory over these things in our lives if we are committed to prayer and fasting and spiritual disciplines. St. Paul tells us to be strong in the Lord. And one of the ways that we are strong in the Lord is being dedicated to prayer and fasting. In Ephesians he writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Brothers and sisters, let us persevere. Never give up. Don't give up hope. Don't, don't become faint. But be persevere in prayer and fasting. And we will see God's work in our life uh, if, if we do this. Christ is in our midst. Yes. Yes.